In this video will review how to use doors, windows, and openings in AutoCAD architecture. Just like in my wall video, you have the basic generic door tool on the design tab of the tool palette or on the build panel of the ribbon on the home tab. You also have specific tabs for doors and for windows. The opening tool is also on the design tab and it's more of a standard non-cased opening in a wall. So when I say that, I mean, uh, like, for example, if it was a stud wall, it would be an opening with a board that wraps around the opening, as opposed to one with a door frame. You can also access the opening tool underneath the door tool on the ribbon if you hit the small drop-down arrow. Door and window assemblies are a little bit more complex, so in the future I can do an additional video on that. On the doors tab, you have the basic types of doors where your most commonly used one would be the hinged single and then you also have hinged double and then uh, the rest of them are also pretty self-explanatory uh, double bifold cased opening where you want to open without a door but you do want to frame uh, pocket doors revolving doors etc so i'll start with the single hinged to kind of show you how the basic concept works so you can start your tool as with any of the other smart tools like the walls, uh, you can go straight to the properties palette if you want to look at the settings. For example, I can change the width here to be 3 feet if I want it to be a little bit more of a standard door size. Your height is 7 feet by default normally, although it will remember your last used size, so I could change that. Um, and then uh, after that, most of the time you're about ready to draw. So the command line says select wall because we want to place the door actually with a wall object and that means that it's anchored. So what that means is that the hole in the wall is going to be automatically cut. So generally your process would be to draw all the walls first and then you go back and add any doors, windows, or other penetrations and the uh, holes will be cut as part of the insertion of those objects. So I select the wall where I want the door to be placed. Now if you pick the wrong one you can just move your mouse around and you have the ability to slide that door to any other wall. So you're not locked in on the wall that you choose. And then your last click is to place the door at a specific insertion point. I'm just going to place it somewhat randomly now and then we'll talk about how to be precise with placing the doors. So just to review, I start my tool. I can check any properties in the properties palette and then I select the wall and then I click to place the door. The door tool will stay active, so I can continue to place doors anywhere else that I want uh, in any parts of the building. So in this way, it can be very quick to add multiple doors in a project. Now, most of the time, you're going to want to be a little bit more precise rather than placing your doors randomly. So let's talk about how you can do that easily. So I'm going to start my tool again and then go to the Properties palette. The important setting that you have is down at the bottom where it says under the location heading, right now mine is set to unconstrained. You have three basic choices. If you're using an older version of AutoCAD architecture, you'll have two basic choices because the offset and center are combined together as one choice. So if I leave it on unconstrained, then I have the ability to slide that door and place it anywhere somewhat randomly. If I uh, choose center, then when I go back to placing the wall, or excuse me, the door, it's going to um, kind of lock itself in on the center of the wall or the midpoint. And then I can move to the next wall and it'll get the midpoint there and then the midpoint there and the midpoint here. So it's kind of locking you in on placing the door at the center of each wall. All right, so now I started my tool again in single and I'm going to set this to offset rather than center. The number under the offset of 6 inches is referring to the offset from the corner or the end of the wall. So now I can select my wall and it's going to place it at 6 inches from the corner. Or I can do this corner or the next one or the next one. So you have the, uh, you have the option at the end of any wall. When it measures that 6 inches, it's measuring it from the interior and it does include the frame size. So it's not really the location of the rough opening. And that takes a little bit of getting used to because if you're doing masonry construction, you would often want it to be perhaps eight inches from the corner, but you'd be measuring that from the block and you'd be measuring that to the rough opening and not to the end of the frame. So sometimes you have to do a little bit of math or perhaps um, move the door down afterwards. Uh, 
a lot of times you can figure out what your offset needs to be by doing a little math and then setting it and then you place all your doors and that would be a little faster than having to move them all afterwards so just keep that in mind so if I have a two inch frame and I want it to be for the rough opening then I would have to slide that over an additional two inches so then I might do something like eight here if I wanted it to be six to the rough opening so now when I place it and then I measure now I have my six to the rough opening for the interior corner so I add two inches because that's the size of the frame so keep that in mind that it's measuring to the interior finished corner and that it does include the frame thickness in that number the offset and the center options are only available in the process of drawing the door if you select the door afterwards and go and look for those they're not there so that's only something available in the process so I start the command and then I go and I fiddle with those settings and then I can go and place it so keep that in mind as well if you want to relocate your door afterwards which is somewhat common then you're just kind of uh, relegated to the old-fashioned ways which means you can figure out where it needs to go and move it down you can also work with the grips so let's talk about the grips for a minute if you select a door that you have drawn you have about five grips the two arrows will flip it back and forth in terms of the uh, latch versus hinge and the swing direction in versus out so you can get any of the four necessary options um, by using those two arrows the triangles at the ends allow you to make the door larger or smaller and it has gray tick marks to denote kind of prefixed sizes so to speak um, so then it's not going to be a random size if you're using those so now you can see I've made it two six rather than three so the air the triangles will allow you to change the size the square grip in the center will move the door up and down the wall you also can use the regular move command to do this so a lot of times if I know that the door needs to be a certain distance off the corner perhaps because I'm drawing an existing plan and maybe it needs to be four feet off the corner if I don't have the offset set correctly in the process then I'll draw myself a reference line and copy or offset that down and then I can use the move command to move it down from the corner or the endpoint of the frame to where the endpoint of my reference line is so now I know that it's four feet off the corner a lot of times I'll use that if I'm uh, working on drawing a plan and there's different sizes because the offset is great if the, you have a lot that are all the same but if you're going to have some that are four feet and some that are six and some that are two then it might be faster to just kind of drop the door in and then use a reference line to slide it down to where it needs to be so that's the basics of working with the door uh, obviously you can change the parameters afterwards in terms of the size um, just not the offset center you also have the swing angle and your swing angle then um, relates to how open it is or how close so sometimes you want a door to maybe be only 45 degrees rather than 90. you can also change the measure to here and uh, then that can help with the whole offset issue but that also then means that the two foot ten that's shown here is the rough opening size rather than the size of the actual door so you'd have to keep that in mind um, that you'd be changing that setting in the process each of these tools is a door style so as you use the tool you're pulling that style into the drawing so if I bring in a hinge double um, the thing with the hinge double is that this size is relating to one leaf so if I want it to be a six foot opening or a pair of doors that total six feet then I would need to change that and then I can place my door so now I've brought that style into the drawing if I change my mind later and this needs to be a double door then I can go and just change the style in the properties palette to be my hinge double so those styles are only going to show up after you use the tool to bring the style into the drawing so if I try to make this a double door and I haven't drawn a double door the style won't show up in my properties palette so I just use the tool bring a double door in and then that style shows up here in your properties palette just like with the walls you have a layer key so these doors are going on an a door layer so that's good we don't have to worry about that so that's the basics of working with the doors now windows and openings work basically exactly the same so once you get the doors down the windows and openings are very easy I can do a window and pick which type I want maybe I'll do a casement I can go to the properties palette and change my size the one thing you do want to consider when it comes to windows is your head and sill heights I'm going to leave that for right now 
uh, you have your basic options of offset, center, and unconstrained that work the same as the doors. So I can do center maybe in this example, select my wall, and then click to drop your window. So in that way it works exactly the same as the doors. With either the door or the window, uh, it's possible to, instead of clicking a wall, I can hit enter, and that gives you the ability to drop a free-floating window um, without a wall. Just keep in mind it's not anchored to anything. So it's not going to cut a hole in a wall because it's not anchored to it. And you can fix that afterwards, but it's much easier to just do it right the first time. Now the uh, window I mentioned head and sill heights. That's really the only difference that you want to think about, other than obviously you have the different styles that relate to how the window operates. So you have your window height and your uh, window width. And then down in the bottom in your location section of the properties palette, you have your head height and sill height. One is always grayed out, and then the other allows you to change, and that's dictated by the vertical alignment field. So if this is set to sill, then the sill is the one that I can change. If this is set to head, then the head is the one that I can change. And then the other one is automatically calculated by subtracting the height of the, the, uh, the height field. So if my head height's at 7'4", and the window is 4 feet high, then obviously my sill height is going to be at 3 foot 4. So that's how that works. So if you want to dictate the head or the sill, you can change that right there in the vertical alignment property. So that's how the windows work. Again, basically the same as the doors. Then the opening object, again, uh, is going to be similar. So that's on the generic design tab. You can hit opening. And then you have your same width and height. You also have the ability to control a head height and sill height. If you want this to not be an opening I walk through, maybe it's like a pass-through opening between a kitchen and a dining room, let's say. So then I could raise the sill height up so that it acted as that rather than an opening that you walk through. Uh, you can also change the shape and things like that uh, if you want to get a little more custom on the opening. You have your um, offset, center, and unconstrained options that work exactly the same way. So now I can click on my wall and then click to place the opening. And then uh, there it's giving you your, your little opening cutout. So that's the uh, opening tool. So I hope those are helpful for you.